That's right, after spending many months in the rainforest in Brazil, I am back in my home country, the Netherlands. And today we are going into nature, into the forest, just to see what wildlife and insects we can find. Let's start the intro! Wow, ladies and gentlemen, what is this? Oh yeah, I am standing in one of my favorite places in the Netherlands to spot rare species of butterflies. This is a giant heathland combined with woodland area called the Straabrechtse Heide. And today I'm going to explore it with my camera and make interesting observations to see if we can see rare insects and other forms of wildlife. Of course, my channel is about butterflies and moths. Ooh, it's a windy day. So of course, I am very focused <coughs> on butterflies and moths. Let's hope we can catch some cool, rare butterflies that I haven't filmed before. But I'll, happy to, I'll be happy to see anything, really. Just to see what nature has to offer. Oh hey look, they have a map of the place. Strabrechtse Heide, this is the name of the place where I am today. And een kleurrijk landschap, it means a colorful landscape. And here we see a map of the place where we are about to walk today. U staat hier means you are standing here. So I'm standing here at the edge of some of these villages and cities and towns. We are about to enter a huge heathland. So this purple area is basically its heathland. The green patches is woodland or forest. So of course the blue here is water. So we're going to encounter some heathland with bogs and pools in them and water. As you can see here even there's a large body of water. You can even see it's a small lake almost. But there is also scarce sandy soil, so the yellow is basically sand. Now, I don't have any route in mind, I'm just gonna go in blind. We may walk this way and check out some of the sand and the lake. We're gonna see what this huge heathland has to offer. Welcome back to the Netherlands, let's get started. Wow. Alright. Hope we see some cool butterflies. Spotted our first butterfly, but it's on the move. So it's impossible to offer you a good close-up. But this is the brimstone butterfly, Gonioptherix ramni. A bright yellow butterfly that can be quite common in woodlands. So, there you go. We got a small glimpse of it, but if we are lucky today, Perhaps we'll get some close-ups of these species if they want to settle down on some flowers. Now guys, these dry, open and sunny fields, they don't look like they sustain much insect life because the vegetation here is so scarce and dried out. But the opposite is true. This is a paradise for interesting butterflies, moths and their caterpillars. And let me show you what I just found down here in the vegetation. Okay, I'm gonna grab the cam. 
I'm gonna t I'm gonna take you with me. I'm hold I'm gonna hold you. So here in the vegetation, we can see something interesting sitting here on the heather. So what is it? Let's take a very close look at it. So what is it that we see here? Aha! Look at this caterpillar. What do you guys think that is? There you go. I believe that in this case, this beautiful blue caterpillar is the species Malacasoma castrensis. The ground lackey moth. And this is a species that likes heathlands. They used to be more common, but sadly they are declining in the Netherlands. It's a very interesting moth. I think the common name is, yeah, the ground lackey moth. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, a ground lackey moth. It is of the Lassio Campidae family. Oops, that was too much zoom, I'm so sorry. Of the Lassio Campidae family. And the caterpillars of this species in particular can often be found in heathlands if you're lucky. Wow, it's currently June, so it's like in the middle of, uh, well, the start of summer. I'd say early to mid-summer. And during this season it's not, it's not crazy to find them. It's a beautiful caterpillar, would you look at that, with the stripes. So this is the first find of the day, it's already something great, isn't it? Malacosoma castrensis, remember the name? I think it, it has just shed its skin and its host plant is uh, heath or heather. That's what it's eating right now, that's the plant it's sitting on. Now heath or heather is a beautiful plant. Believe it or not, but these dry scrubby bushes around September, late in the year and August, they grow beautiful purple flowers and the whole landscape here turns bright purple. It's beautiful when that happens in the Netherlands. All right, that's cool. This is very promising. I just arrived and I already found a cool insect. Some people will ask me, Bart, don't you want to take this caterpillar and rear it into a moth? The answer is no, this is a protected area. This is a natural reserve. I respect the laws, okay? I respect the laws and from a protected area I don't take insects I just want to film them for you on YouTube and talk about them and that's it sometimes you just have to enjoy nature and experience it in the wild you know that's what it's all about really and it makes me happy this is a beautiful place in the Netherlands really let's keep going pretty sure these heathlands here behind me have a lot to offer! Oh, I'm getting excited. I want to see butterflies. Where's the butterflies? There seems to be some sort of mating ritual going on here. You can see it. Oop, there goes the butterfly. Alright guys, I just located our first butterflies. Here along the trail there appears to be like this little margin with brambles and young shrubs. And I see a lot of skipper butterflies in this specific area. Patrolling, feeding on the flowers, like this specific area they like it a lot. Let me show you some close-ups of them. Oh, they're flying around. The Netherlands has several species of skipper butterflies. That looks similar. It's hard to identify them, but I think this is Ochlodes sylvanus, the large skipper butterfly. The faint checkered pattern on the upper side and underside distinguishes them from the other species in my country. The host plant of the species are several grasses from the cereal or bamboo family, such as orchard grass, false brome, weed, reeds, foxtail, foxtail grasses and more. This interesting skipper appears to be very common in this area. Now here is a very unusual treat. 
a cuckoo wasp. These are some of the most beautiful little wasps you can possibly find in Europe. Sadly it seems to be impossible to determine the species from the video alone, but I can tell you some general facts about the cuckoo wasps. Commonly known as cuckoo wasps or emerald wasps, wasps from the Crisididae family are called cuckoo wasps because just like a cuckoo bird that manages to get another species to raise its chicks, they lay their eggs in the nest of other species of bees and wasps, and thus they are considered to be brood parasites. They are generally kleptoparasites laying their eggs in the host's nest, where their larvae consume the host egg or larva while it's still young. Then the food provided by the host for its own juvenile. Adults can be seen foraging for nectar. Most species are very tiny and thus it's hard to film them or make good pictures of them, but they do tend to have beautiful color patterns. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I came to this area for one special reason. This area has one of the biggest populations in the Netherlands of one very special species of butterfly. It is called the green hair streak, Callofris ruby, and it's incredibly beautiful. Yeah, as the name implies, this butterfly is green. And I mean shiny, metallic, iridescent green. I hope we're going to see them today. We need a little bit of luck. But this butterfly is one of the main reasons that I came to this place. Oh my god, guys! I just discovered a giant patch here with bramble. Bramble that's flowering. Why is this a big deal? Because this, my friends, is a banquet for insects. Oh my god, I see bees, I see butterflies, I see so many insects. Wow! I don't even know which one to film first. Okay, guys, there's some small copper, Licaena fleas. Let me show you them first. This Licaena fleas is a very common and charismatic species of butterfly in the Netherlands. It's hard to get images with their wings open, but if they do open their wings they are bright orange. Oh, it's so windy. These butterflies are by no means rare, but it's nice to see them doing well and thriving. I wish it wasn't so windy. Oh, it's opening its wings. Look, the orange. The orange is very beautiful. Look at that. Oops, sorry, I bumped into the camera. And, oh, hope the wasp didn't harass it. So can you see the beautiful orange this species has? This is a small species known as the common copper, really. And they really love bramble flowers. It's a great and very iconic insect. They're also really easy to breed in captivity if you're into that sort of thing. I am, that's why I mention it. Looks like a bee was trying to take its flower, but uh, it wasn't having it. So it flicked its wings, which basically means go away. Oh, it's a wonderful little species, man. Ah. Uh. Likaena fleas. 
I love this butterfly. Somehow they remind me of a ladybug. I'll tell you, this butterfly is just so much more pretty if they open their wings. But most of the time they're really just not willing to do that. To just sit there with their wings closed. The inside is some of the brightest orange like that you'll see in your life. It's like fiery orange. This butterfly has multiple generations per year. And the host plants are dog or sorrel from the genus Rumex. That's basically their primary host plant. Oh my god, guys! I think we won the jackpot! Woohoo! I found a few green hair streaks feeding on this whole patch of bramble. Let me show you some close ups. Here's one, here's one. Let me show you, let me show you. Wow, here it is. The butterfly I came to see today. It's Gallophis ruby, the green hair streak. And I'm pretty sure it's the very first time I filmed it for my channel. This butterfly has just one generation a year, as their caterpillars always hibernate and turn into butterflies the next year, although it's quite spread out. Butterflies can be seen from March to September, with the peak numbers around May. The caterpillars use house plants such as alder buckthorn, bramble, blueberry, heath and European rowan. They are found in heathlands, limestone grasslands, and fans and bogs. Wow, this butterfly is really special to me. It's special to my heart because it's really beautiful. It's the kind of species you would expect to see in a tropical rainforest, not in the Netherlands. Wow. And this just goes to show how important flowers are for insects. How important flowers are for nature. And in this case, bramble. This bramble is basically giving food to thousands of insects who really desperately need it on a hot summer day. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dear Bart Coppens. Guys, the day that I am filming this, it is June 14th. And today is a special day because it's my birthday and I am turning 30 years old today. Now, a lot of people ask me, Bart, what are you going to do? Are you going to throw a party? Sorry, guys, I've never been a party animal. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I've never been big on holidays. I've never been big with celebrations. Christmas? I don't care. New Year's Eve? I don't care. Easter? <sighs> Boring. Why do we ce ce celebrate these? Well, I'm not religious, so if you're a Christian or something, I understand the religious motivation between, behind it, but like, Birthdays, holidays, I don't care. And today I am doing what makes me the happiest. Being alone in a forest. But I am not alone, I have friends with me. It's you. You are my friends. Thank you guys for watching. Let's have a beer together. Guys, I am not an alcoholic, okay? And I want to say... To the young people watching, please don't drink alcohol unless you are an adult. It doesn't make you cool. But it's my birthday, man. It's a hot summer day. 
I think I can have one. Just one. Ah, so it's official. Bart Coppens is in his 30s now. And it's crazy to think how long I've been on YouTube. I've been on YouTube since my early 20s. I think my oldest videos are like eight or nine years old. I think I was 21 or 22 years old when I started making my first YouTube videos. And you can literally see me age. If you go to my oldest videos, you will see a young Bart with a smooth skin and long hair. Now I'm old and uh, wrinkled. But you know what? 30 is still young. In fact, I even st think that 40 is young. I think when you're in your 50s or your 60s, that's when you can call yourself older. So cheers to many years on YouTube. Cheers to many YouTube videos and to many beautiful insects and butterflies. Cheers to many subscribers and teaching people about nature. Getting people in touch with nature. Showing them how beautiful nature is and how it deserves to be protected and conserved. Insect conservation. If I had to make one birthday wish is I wouldn't ask for any gift. My birthday wish is I hope more people will learn about insects and understand their importance. Then that's all I want. That's the biggest gift. If people become interested in the beauty and amazing lives of insects. We are losing them so rapidly. So many species are threatened and declining and endangered. We have to stop it guys for our ecosystem, for the planet. Cheers! Nothing makes me happier than seeing all these pollinators in action. This is good. This is what we want for nature. I'm not going to bother to identify all of them. But if we just take some close-ups here of the flowers. Let's see. Let's look how many insects there's flying here. It's pretty insane actually. Like the sheer number of wasps and stuff that are just passing by. Guys, this area with the brambles is amazing. I could spend hours here looking at the green hair streaks, but we have to move on. We have a whole natural reserve that we want to explore. I really would like to stay at the good spots, but you never know. If you stay in one place, you're gonna miss out on other stuff as well. Ah, it's time for my meatball sandwich. Sorry, vegetarians. Actually, nowadays I cook a lot of meals with fake meat, like the fake substitute meat. Sometimes you don't know the difference. But I'm still not 100% vegetarian, so here's the meatball sandwich. Yeah! And the road goes on and on, but I like that. I am a wanderer in my soul. I like to wander. It's the best distraction you have. Wandering and not knowing where the road is going to end, you know. Oh look, there's a lot more road ahead of us. Ah. It's a beautiful day, the sky is blue, the sun is shining, there's not too many people here which is important, and the butterflies are out in full force. 
Wow. This is a funny place. Whoa. Strong winds. Strong winds. Guys, remember when in the beginning of this video I showed you a map of this area and on the map we saw some bodies of water. Well, I seem to have located them behind me. Little pools. I'm pretty sure it could have birds and stuff. Speaking of water, I say this in all my videos. I don't care if I repeat myself, always bring plenty of water guys, hiking without water is dangerous, especially on a hot day. Seriously hydrate yourself, bring water with you, it's essential. Some more of it. Plants kind of struggle to grow in these places, but you still get pine trees which seem to grow well on sandy soils, shrubland with heath or heather, yeah, a lot of dry warm vegetation. I mean it's kind of cool huh? If you want a real desert in the Netherlands, I can film that for you too someday. They attract their own kind of butterflies. One kind of butterfly you could expect in such an environment, for example, is Hipparchia semele or Hipparchia statilinus. I don't think we are going to see those today. It could be too early in the year for them and I don't think this is the right area. But I do like this kind of habitat. You can see these pieces in some of my older videos. But yeah, even this even if it looks barren, it has very, uh, it has value for the environment. There's always going to be some species who can adapt to it. Another common copper. These are quite common in this area. That reminds me, I should breed these orange cuties one day. Some people say it's really easy to breed them.
Now, one of the plants that's very typical for such a landscape are young trees of paper birch, Betela papyrifera. It's very typical to see small birch trees in a heath landscape, more or less. That's because in the first stages of succession, these are some of the first and fastest trees to go. Birches are typically some of the first and fastest growing trees. If you cut a landscape or you graze it or you deforest it, one of the first trees that shoot out of the ground very fast are birches. Beutula papyrifera. And you get a lot of these young birch trees here. Hello. Another type of plant that is abundant in this landscape is a um, pine tree. I believe this is a small Scots pine. Pinus sylvestris. Now these plants are resistant to very dry and hot areas, such as this one. It's one of the few plants that can thrive here, despite the fact it's so hot and dry. Cool, huh? Little bit of botany, why not? Now guys, this is a beautiful open terrain. Beautiful heathland, but I'm gonna be honest, in terms of wildlife, especially in terms of insects, I'm not seeing much anymore. I think I went too far into the open fields and this terrain is just too hot, too scarce, too open, too dry. So I wanna go, I wanna make it back to some of the woodland edges. Because there is a small forest in the back and around the edges of the woodland, that's often where the cool animals are concentrated. I don't think we can see much in these open uh, fields. It's interesting to be here though. Here's another map. So I'm here. I seem to be here on the edge of what seems to be more woodland and those pools. And I think we started like down here which is not visible, but we went this way. It's nice that they put maps here. So I can go around this and go down here and do a circle and go back to the beginning. Okay, let's continue. Man. I want to go back to the area with butterflies. Haven't seen any for ages in this part of the natural reserve. I feel like where I started out in the beginning, that's where the butterfly hotspot was. All these places, I don't see any activity. But you never know, we may encounter some more nice places with more butterflies, you know. It's the thing with nature, you never know what you're gonna see, you never know what you're gonna expect. It's gonna be interesting though. Alright guys, I made it back to the wooded area. There's more plants here, but I just spotted a huge patch of flowers up ahead. Of course it's bramble. Bramble seems to be the big lifesaver here for insects for some reason. It's one of the only plants that I've really seen in flower. Uh, there seems to be a booming presence of insects here. So let's inspect it. I see a lot of bumblebees and stuff. It would be nice to catch any butterflies. Well, not catch them, but like make close-ups.
All right, lots of activity by pollinators and insects. But no more green hair streaks today. It seems like I stumbled upon like the hotspot of their activity earlier today and there were dozens. Uh, since I walked away from that little area, haven't seen any any other green hair streaks today. But that's okay, we, we, we saw them, we made some nice close-ups. It would be nice to see them again, but it would even be nicer to see more butterfly species that we even haven't seen today, that would be even cooler. Um, my impression is this place has a lot of unique butterflies that I rarely see in the Netherlands. Although it's only a handful of species. I expected more. It's been a very cold, chilly spring, followed by a strangely dry and hot summer. So I think this year is not a good year for butterflies in general. I um, feel like the diverse diversity of species here should be a bit higher than it is today. But we did see a lot of the green hair streak, Callophis ruby, which is a treat. Yeah, those butterflies, I don't see them very often in the Netherlands, unless I go to heathlands. Uh, which tend to be far away from where I live. I actually traveled from far away to go to this place in particular. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm not unhappy, I'm actually quite pleased to get close-ups of that awesome butterfly. I've always wanted to film it for you on YouTube. But uh, exploring this place is interesting, you know. At the beginning there was overwhelming amount of insects. But if I walk across the forest, the other side of the forest seems to have a bit less insect activity somehow. Yeah, um, it's an interesting observation. Oh, so now as we can see, it's becoming much more of a wooded area. That's interesting. I wonder what route I should take. I want to loop around the natural reserve in one circle and then go back to where I came from essentially. So I wonder if I'm doing it the right way. I feel like I should go in here. I feel like this is going to loop around. Uh, we go with the flow. Good news is that in the Netherlands you don't get lost in the forest. We are a very small country and uh, our nature is very small. So you can walk for hours and go wherever you want. And there is a guarantee that you'll end up like at a train station or a bus stop. Just go in a straight line and you're bound to find civilization at one point. That's the big advantage. Well, that sure is interesting. I can't say that walking on this I can't say that walking on this is very comfortable. Somebody is going to get sued here if I break my neck. Damn. Look at how uneven these poles are. Oh well. How silly. What an incredible species of butterfly this is. It's really made my day very happy. Um, I'm very happy with this video. And you know, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of butterflies in the Netherlands that I haven't 
scene yet that I haven't filmed yet. But in order to do that, I need your help, man. I need your help to make those kind of videos. Now let me show you some butterflies that I would love to see. One is Lycaena dispar de Batavus, the large copper. In my country it's very unique. Uh, we have an endemic subspecies that's entirely orange. Of course there's also the purple emperor butterfly, Apatura iris. I think that one would be fantastic to see on a YouTube video. It is one amazing butterfly. And if I want to make a video of these insects, I have to go into, I have to travel a lot and track them down for you guys. I'm willing to make it happen. If you guys have my back, but more about that later. Oh wow, look guys, here are more of the hair streaks that I came here to film. Please enjoy these images. Here we even have two of them on one flower. And I'm very angry that the wind is ruining this shot that otherwise would be amazing. But, enjoy it regardless. These butterflies typically chase each other a lot. These are dog fighting green hair streaks. Now guys, here for you there is another lucky find. This plant here is Ramnus. And it's the host plant of the brimstone butterfly. And I just found a caterpillar. This one seems, seems to be about fully grown. It's very typical to find these caterpillars at this time in the year on the small trees of Ramnus. And it's going to turn into a beautiful brimstone butterfly. That's pretty cool, eh? So now you guys know what a caterpillar looks like. This appears to be the end of the forest. I think we've had our fail today, however. Starting to get late. And I think we saw more green hair streaks than we can count. So I should say, mission successful, mission accomplished, and now we're starting to see some typical Dutch countryside, a lot of farms, in fact we have too much farmland in the Netherlands, they should remove the farmland and turn a lot of it back into forest. It's been a big problem. Did you know that 52% of the surface area of the Netherlands is agriculture? That's more than half. Literally more than half our country is agriculture. That's not right. Something needs to change. We need more nature, less farmers. But yeah, look at the Dutch cultural landscape here. We're about to enter a small village on the border of forest.
Right folks, here we are. Back at the train station. So basically we did this. From here in the city, all the way over here. This whole circle down here, went back up. There you go. That's a long walk. Hey man, I have to buy train tickets to make these kind of videos. And by the way, did you know my whole channel is demonetized by YouTube and I don't make any money from any of my videos except for what people donate? Consider becoming a member of my Patreon if you really like my content. It helps me make more videos so I can buy more train tickets to go to cooler places. Oh, and by the way, I designed new merchandise that I'm sending to people if they subscribe to the higher tiers of my Patreon. It includes mugs, stickers, cards, t-shirts and more. Thank you and see you next time.